Holy crap, everybody, it finally came. So stoked, and now we're gonna craft about it. Welcome to the Story Craft Society. Welcome to the channel, everybody. My name is Garmin. This is the Storycraft Society, and it is Thursday, so we are on to another episode. This week was supposed to be the Build the Crafting Board episode. That's not gonna happen. Too excited for this one to come out, but I promise that will be out next week. This week, we're talking about Candle Keep, and we're talking about something that I think is gonna be really exciting. So while flipping through the book, the first thing that caught my attention was the very first adventure. It's an adventure called The Joy of Extra Dimensional Spaces. It's basically laid out in a way where the PCs will explore Fistandia's mansion. Okay, I'm gonna do my best to avoid spoilers in this video, but seriously, there could be spoilers. We're gonna be crafting the terrain for it, so just you know, be smart about that. Back to the video. But the cool thing about this adventure for me is that it actually reminded me about a tile system that I made for Ghosts of Saltmarsh in the Sinister Secret of Saltmarsh adventure. Some of you might remember that a while ago, this was actually part of my intro. So it's been something that was on my docket of things to do. I actually had three goals in mind for it. Number one, it had to be simple to make. Number two, it had to be as modular as I could make it, so I could make as many different settings as possible. And lastly, it had to be more sturdy than dungeon tiles. Foam dungeon tiles have a tendency that when you bump them, it knocks them and they kind of all scatter around. A dungeon, it makes more sense to use dungeon tiles because it's usually more irregular and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense when you look down on it. Dungeon tiles are fine there. But in mansions or large houses, for me, I wanted something that made a little more sense and if you bumped it, it was quicker to push it back into place and get it where it needed to be. Honestly, right now, I'm gabbing too much, so let's just jump into how to make these tiles. Let's go. So to start this project off, it started like any other project for me. Step one, endless optimism. Step two, I get a flood of ideas from reading the adventure. Step three, I begin planning. Gotta sketch everything out and know what you're doing. Step four, flood of doubt and pre-project insecurity where I figure I am not good enough to make this and that all of my stuff looks like crap. Step five, stop being silly, let's do this. So to make this build easier for myself and for anybody who would wanna craft along with me, I decided to draw some plans out for Fistandia's mansion as well as a craft list so that you know what pieces you need to craft to make this exact mansion. So what I'll do with both the plans and the craft list is put them up on the Instagram so anybody who wants to go grab those while crafting this adventure can go and do that. Uh, I'm gonna link the Instagram in the description below. Now to showcase the system, I'm gonna be making three different types of pieces. Simple stucco walls, simple stone walls, and then finally I'm gonna be making hallway pieces. That way you can then look at the craft list, decide which type that you wanna make, and then you know make all of the pieces that you need. The reason I'm showing the simple stucco walls off is not because you're gonna need them if you're crafting this particular adventure. I just wanna show you the width of different types of pieces that you could get. And I'm sure there's other things that I haven't thought of yet that would actually be really cool to make as well. But to kick off the crafting of this project, I cut out all the base pieces that I'm gonna need and all three, the simple stucco tiles, the simple stone tiles, and the hallway tiles are a little different so I'm gonna break each one down individually. But of course the first challenge I had was to very smoothly and skillfully remove my craft knife from its very simple case. And as you can see, it gave me no difficulty at all. Absolutely no difficulty at all. What's up everybody? Actually, I wanted to take a quick second in the middle of the video to tell you about a segment that I'm gonna be adding to the end of my videos coming here in the next couple of weeks. It's a segment that I decided to call Craft of the Day, and honestly, it's born out of all of the kind words that y'all have given to me. Um, I really wanna be able to pay that back. So what I'm gonna be doing is highlighting one of your projects every week uh, at the end of my videos where I talk about something that I really like about it. It could be a project that's your first craft. It could be something that you put a lot of time in 
or something that I'm really impressed by. I really don't have criteria for it, but the way that you can get those to me is by tagging the Storycraft Society on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. I'll go through all of those that I get, and each week I will pick somebody that I really like what they were doing, uh, and I will share that with everybody at the end of my videos. So if that's something that you would be interested in having your project featured in, just tag us on one of the socials. All of those, of course, are listed in the description below, and hopefully you'll be seeing your project uh, at the end of one of my videos. So thank you so much. Like, comment, and subscribe, all that stuff. Let's get back to the video. To start the stucco room tiles, I cut the base to the size of the inner floor by half an inch tall. Now our tiles are gonna be half an inch tall in the middle and they're gonna be an inch tall at the walls, but we'll get to that later. Because the walls are half an inch thick, it's gonna make the external dimensions of our room tiles one inch bigger in all directions. So for example, if it was a three by three tile, by the end it's gonna actually be a four by four tile on the outside while remaining a three by three tile on the inside. In the top surface, I cut half inch lines to mark off my floorboards and I do this for two reasons. One, because it makes the floorboards look like floors, but also I do them in half inch measurements because it actually makes it like work like a kind of a secret grid that every two planks is an inch. But after I used my craft knife to cut in all of the planks, I used a pencil to widen the lines. I went in with my plastic wire brush to scratch in the wood grain. And lastly, I took a toothpick and I punched nail holes in to the ends of the boards to add a little bit of realism. Now with the stone tiles, they're a little different. When I cut the base, I didn't cut them to the interior dimension, but I actually cut them to the exterior dimension. So for example, if our room is going to be a three by three tile for a stone walled room, I'm actually going to cut the base of the tile to four inch by four inch by a half inch thick. I carved the outside half inch thick area to look like stone blocks. I used a tin foil ball to texture them up and then I cut my half inch wide floorboards into the center of that to the dimensions that the interior of the room will be. In this case, because I was going for a three by three interior tile, I made my wood planks three by three, the full base of the tile being the four by four. To move on to the hallways, they're the simplest. You just cut them to the dimensions that you want. In this case, I did a two inch by four inch section of hallway. I cut my half inch wide floorboards into the top and then the crafting of the hallway pieces are done. Going back to the stucco tiles, I need to now put on the exterior walls. So what I did was I cut strips of XPS foam that are one inch tall by a half inch thick by the outside dimensions of my tile. I textured those up using a tin foil ball to look like stucco and then I glued them onto the outside of my base piece. So moving on from there, we move on to finishing up our stone tiles. Now I have a whole bunch of bricks that are one half inch by one half inch by three quarters of an inch that I used on my Cragmaw Castle build. I will put a link in the description below to find that video so you can see how I made them. But what's really important here is that they are one half inch by one half inch because that makes them match up with our stucco wall tiles. With my glue gun in hand, I set into gluing down all of the bricks. This was the most tedious part of this build, but that's okay. Uh, you just keep gluing, keep gluing, have a little bit of patience, and eventually you will get them done. So to finish the pieces up, it's actually not that bad. What I start with is throwing Black Magic Craft base coat to get them all base coated. This is just a 50-50 mixture of black acrylic craft paint and matte Mod Podge that strengthens up the foam and gives me a nice flat black base coat to start painting on top of. And then my paint scheme is very simple. I'm not even gonna go into it. I'm just going to drop a link in the description below to my Lazy Crafters Guide to Painting video. I follow that to a T to get all of these pieces 
painted up. I tried to make it as quick and simple as possible. When you're churning out a lot of tiles, simple and quick is your best friend. But with the tiles finished, now I get to show off the magic that I get from these mansion tile pieces. What it allows me to do is make just anything that my imagination can come up with. They are just so easy to use. And while they aren't 100% modular like a dungeon tile is, they are so close and you can get so many different scenarios, situations, buildings out of them. You can make mansions, you can make towers with different levels. I mean, honestly, you can make dungeons if you really wanted to. It would just be a lot of square rooms instead of more typical kind of labyrinthian dungeons. Let's even go crazy here. You could actually make a set of these and these could function as your houses. You just drop these down onto the table I mean, I don't know why you couldn't make a whole village using these tiles. Now, I will take a quick second to talk about the doors that I'm using in this build. The reason that we made our walls stick up a half inch over top of our floorboards is so that we could take and set doors down onto them. Now, the doors that I'm using are the exact ones that I built in my Red Brand Hideout conclusion video. Again, I'll link that in the description below as well. What I do is I actually build those doors. The only difference is I cut a half inch by half inch notch out of the bottom and then the doors set down wherever I need them to on the walls. This is so incredibly, incredibly, incredibly useful because now I can change all of the entrances and exits to any of the rooms that I need. But with that said, I hope that you get some kind of use out of this video. I just see this tile system as so wildly useful in so many different applications and honestly in ways that foam dungeon tiles just don't do it for me. Hopefully you feel the same way. But I'm gonna leave you with glamour shots of Fistandia's mansion. If you like this video, please leave me a like down below. Comment on how you would use this system or improvements or anything like that that you would make to it. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Let your friends know about the channel if they're interested in crafting for Dungeons and Dragons, whether they're crafting stories or terrain. But otherwise, that's all I've got to say. If you haven't checked out our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, be sure to do that. But until next week, I'll be seeing you. Now some of you actually might remember Now some of you actually might remember this because it was actually one of the clips in my original intro so I've been meaning to talk about this layout <clears throat> So <clears throat> some of you might remember that this was actually a <clears throat> Some of you might remember a long time ago when it was actually part of my intro this was a clip um <clears throat> Some of you might remember that a long time ago, this was actually part of my intro uh, and the clips that you're seeing, 